We've all heard the old saying, they don't make them like they used to, but sometimes that can be a good thing. Take cars, for example. Automobile accidents in the 50s and 60s often resulted in deaths because they were heavy and solid. They were essentially battering rams flying down the road at high speeds. And when those two forces collided, it was devastating for both parties. But now there are crumple zones, spaces designed to absorb the impacts of a collision, often saving lives instead of ending them. But what about electronics? Manufacturers definitely don't make them like they used to. But there's a reason for that. Honestly, I understand their logic behind it, but I still have some suggestions going forward. So let's get into it. These days, there's one word that is the focal point in the decision-making regarding how all manufacturers build electronics, technology. It is advancing so fast that manufacturers have to make a choice. Do we manufacture a product built to last or build it in a way that's just good enough to last until newer technologies implemented in the updated version? And of course, we all know they went with the latter. Electronics repair shops are almost non-existent because why get it repaired when getting the brand new version doesn't cost that much more? Gone are the days of owning electronics that last 10, 20 years because now it only takes an average of about two years for certain technologies to become antiquated or obsolete. Apple has made it an annual event to release a new iPhone, which so many people salivate over. It's created a culture of tech lovers that will go to great lengths just to have the latest and greatest version of product X. Just look at HDMI. Since June of 2009, roughly 14 years ago, it's gone from version 1.4, 1.4a, 1.4b, to 2.0, 2.0a, 2.0b, and now 2.1 seven different versions in 14 years. Again, there's that two year average. But putting myself in the shoes of any consumer electronics manufacturer, I get it. Why put that many man hours into research and development, electrical engineering, updates to any physical connections when something better will be discovered or invented a year or two later? Do you remember Firewire connections? I still have an audio interface that uses a Firewire connection, to which I need to connect a series of dongles and adapters just to make it work with my more modern laptop that only has USB-C ports. This is my life now. Obviously, the goal of any company is to make a profit and grow their business, to protect their bottom line. So they're in a tricky position right now trying to find the right balance between money spent on an updated product launch while simultaneously keeping up with advancing technologies. If you're new to this channel, welcome. But I do focus mainly on home audio. And I know a lot of you in that realm were aware of the faulty HDMI 2.1 chipsets in Denon, Marantz, and Yamaha AV receivers back in 2020. It's also commonplace for Apple to roll out new iPhones or a new version of iOS with software bugs. And that's just par for the course now because the second they release a new product or operating system, that means they're already at least halfway done developing the next version. The pace at which technology is advancing is forcing every manufacturer to operate at full speed without giving them a chance to pause, reflect, take a step back, and look at their business model from a new perspective. Just like what's trending on Twitter or the new TikTok fad, if you weren't in it to begin with, by the time you discover it, it's already yesterday's news. It's hard to keep up. In the home audio sector specifically, that's why soundbars are so popular right now. Easy to connect, easy to set up, and boom a home theater experience far superior to the crappy speakers built into your TV. But once it starts to do weird things or glitch out of the blue after a year or two, out with the old and in with the new version. Yay, out of sight, out of mind, as it ends up in a landfill. Bye. But as I stated earlier about the faulty HDMI 2.1 chipsets, even traditional home theater systems are not immune. So what can we do? Well, since technology will continue to advance at breakneck speed, especially with AI, oof, don't get me started on the fascinating yet equally terrifying reality of AI advancements. Here's one feature I hope all manufacturers will embrace sooner than later, modularity. To create consumer electronics with a modular design in mind, being able to swap out or upgrade certain parts of any given product is the direction I hope we're headed. Oh, modularity exists today, even in the home audio sector, don't you worry. But at least for now, you have to pay top dollar for it. Although Emotiva has somehow made it slightly more feasible with their XMC2 and RMC1 preamp processors. They are both modular, designed from the ground up, as they say right here, being able to make future updates simply by adding a new module instead of needing to buy a whole new unit. 
The same goes for Trinoff preamp processors. In fact, in September of 2021, they had a software update that allowed their Altitude 16 to support four additional channels, making it 20 total at no additional cost. But the Altitude 16 costs upwards of $18,000. Yikes. I know the majority of us can't afford to pay for a preamp that's the same price as a modest four-door sedan, so I can't help but wish that more manufacturers took the modular approach. If and when HDMI 2.2 comes out, for example, or whatever the new thing is, and you're happy with your Sony HTA9, it would be great to be able to swap out the little bay where the HDMI port resides in the control hub. But obviously Sony didn't design it with that in mind. Like Emotiva stated on their website that the RMC1 and XMC2 were built from the ground up, everyone else would have to do that. Start from square one. But that would take a lot of time and money thrown at their research and development departments. So it would maybe take some new management changes within a company to implement such a drastic shift in their business model, or some fresh new startups that have learned what not to do from companies that have been around for a long time and just don't have enough time or capital to go into a more modular direction. But if more and more companies somehow adopt a modular approach, I think we would start to see a resurgence in consumer electronics repair shops. Just take the module in that needs repair. If it happens to be dead on arrival and nothing else can be done, oh look, the repair shop happens to have a working module in stock. And there's a happy customer. I know Marquez Brownlee touched on the right to repair some months ago, and I totally agree with him. We all should have the right to repair our electronics if we see fit because it will drastically reduce the amount of waste we're just tossing into the garbage. I know Apple has a fantastic upgrade or recycle plan in place, but what percentage of those in the Apple ecosystem actually take advantage of it? 50%, 25%, only 10%? Now, I don't think a CEO of any manufacturer will see this or care that I've brought this topic up, but I sure hope that having a more modular mindset will help us as humans in the future to create less waste, reduce our carbon footprint, and have the peace of mind that once we purchase something, we can maybe go back to being able to hang on to something for at least 10 years before needing to upgrade again. Wouldn't that be nice? Although on the flip side, if you thought technology was advancing quickly already, generative AI is causing that trajectory to go at an even steeper angle. So maybe the robot uprising is closer than I thought. Until then, I'm still gonna try to do what I can to make my home theater sound the best it can. Cheers to that. Thank you for joining me on my soapbox. What are your thoughts on tech advancements in general? or the fact that it seems like everything is built to last one to two years, maybe five tops. Or what about generative AI? Is it fascinating to you or terrifying or both? Let's have a conversation, people. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them. And of course, always be listening. Just like my iPhone is always listening to me. Ugh.